Hi everyone. So last time we looked at how we can use a studio to create uh, practice tracks for our vocal groups or for our choirs, uh, and that was obviously just using single voices, which probably makes sense when we're making practice tracks. However, what if we're doing for choirs and we, we want that actual choir sound? Well, a studio can do that as well. And so I thought let's use a slightly more traditional example. And so I, I found uh, from musecore.com, this is If You Love Me by Thomas Tellis. And so let's see how we can get that into a studio and um, see what we can do with it. Again, just a reminder that uh, a studio sent me a month's license to use their, their software. Um, you can go and purchase it yourself. Uh, but again, reminder, they are not paying me to say nice things about their product. We are just using this as a review and a chance to see what their product can do. So thanks to A-Studio for sending me that so that I can review it, but they are not paying me. So same as last time, we are going to export this as a music XML. Some things that we are going to be looking at is uh, certainly the pronunciation. Obviously, this is far more uh, classical minded. So we, we're going to be looking for those classical type of, of uh, voices. We're also going to be looking at choir type voices, which which will be interesting to see how it does with that. Uh, we also want to look at the pronunciations of certain words, uh, melismas, uh, and of course there is this. This is piece is famous because it's got this spirit on a single note. It's a multi-syllable word on a single note, and so let's see how uh, how a studio deals with it and how we can deal with it equally. Okay, so a reminder, we take the XML that we just exported, bring it into a studio, and we now have the four different tracks. Great, uh, time signature, yes please. We have, okay, now these are the pop sounds, so let's get, let's start rather with our classical sounds. So we'll take the one Carolyn that we have. I will say as well that I've heard from a studio that they are planning on adding more classical voices. So that is also really good news. Uh, let's take a tenor for the tenor and baritone for the bass. If you want to see how to blend voices and to get you know different kinds of, of nice sounding voices, uh, feel free to go and look at the previous video where we looked at that. This one is going to focus on something, some different aspects of this software. Okay, so same as last time, once we press play, it starts rendering the audio and we'll see what we get. If he loved me. All right, so straight off the bat, uh, we can hear that we need to do some mixing and this is where the mixer of course comes in handy because Robert for some reason is very loud. So let's just turn him down. If he loved me. All right, so already uh, that's that's nicer. We can do that. We can even put them in different places, but we're going to see how there's actually another way to get a nicer sound with that. So let's close our mixer for now. All right, so obviously this is uh, this is soprano. Let's just rename these tracks. Give me a second. Let's just look at some details. For instance. Uh, let's see one on here. So something that's already quite nice is uh, you can see that the way they organize this is where the words, let's just zoom out again, here we go. So you have this thing, I'll keep my commandments. Uh, the words are in this box at the bottom and it kind of automatically puts them in. This was done by the music XML. So most of the work has been done for us, which is wonderful. But let's just solo this one. And here's where the power comes in. I don't like commandments. I like commandments because uh, this is a more traditional British song, right? Um, this is Thomas Tallis. This is not American. And so I can go and change these vowels or, or anything that we use. We have complete control of it. So uh, I don't want commandments. I want commandments. And I think this is the one to use. Let's just see if that helps. It'll need to re uh, it'll need to render again. That's already much better. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure about command. Can we try commandments? 
No, perhaps not. Command mount seems to be the better one. <laughs> all right, uh, but I can change that in all of the others. This is where it would be nice to be able to change all of them at once, but uh, you know, it makes sense that, that that is not possible right now. Uh, let's take this one. Commandments. Commandments. Right, let's hear that all together now. My commandments. And I That's already very nice. Uh, let's just go back to this one. And I will so that one, we just wanted a bit more. Um, we want a, a few more of the consonants, right? And. And you can see here uh, at, in this bottom section, this darker section is the consonant. So we can increase the length of that to make it more obvious, uh, which which we probably want. And I, so there the lightest section, or the, yeah, still darker, but not quite as dark is, oh wait, sorry, that's an N, N and. So that's why we weren't hearing the D because it was so quiet. And I will. And then we want a nice prey, uh, so we probably want a bit more of the the P prey. Let's try that. Let it render. And I will pray the Already, that's a, a big difference, right? We can. Uh, so you could go in and really spend some time, absolutely perfecting the the pronunciation of these words. Which I can respect, as as uh, you know, AI can't always be trusted to do it exactly right. So I like that they give us the the control. Now we said earlier we were we were expecting to have that problem with the word spirit. Here we go. Even the spirit of truth. Let's see what they do. It looks like it's all in one word. The spirit of truth. Okay. That is not entirely surprising. I don't think. Uh, that they okay so they uh, default to spear I think uh, many choir communities have had discussions about this uh, this certainly the one that I've heard is spirit so we can equally just go and add this in spirit let's make that separate there we go spirit and, and I think we probably want the P spirit 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 no actually spirit It'll probably work quite nicely which should, once it renders, uh, and it automatically adds those extra ones in there, which is just so cool. Of truth. Beautiful. So really nothing much to work on there. Uh, we could possibly add a little bit more of the t sound. We don't need the r too much, but this is wonderful. Obviously this does happen quite a bit, so you want to find, oh, there's another one, right? The spirit, oops, careful of that. Use undo if we need to, spirit. We don't want to render all of them together. We want to go and fix all of them. So it, it can take a bit of time, but that is fine. We're happy to do that. All right, we've spoken about blending and changing the voices. Other things we can control, which really are amazing. I can go into uh, modulation, which is really cool, because each voice has its sort of built-in modulation that it does. Uh, and I can see this even, for instance, has a huge modulation. Sorry, has huge vibrato. Uh, even is another one, right? We, we're expecting a problem there. Uh, and I would, pr I guess this would be, uh, let's just go back to our note mode. And air could probably be in. Didn't like EE. -E. Uh, I think this is IY. Let's see if that works better. There we go. In the spirit of truth, right. Uh, possibly an even. But no, I don't think so. I think in the spirit of truth is generally accepted. But we can see that massive vibrato. And we have the ability to control that, which is really cool. So first of all, we have the ability to control how much. And like we've got all these tools to play around with it that I have not really experimented with too much yet. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, what we can do more easily, though, is choose this modulation tool. And I can even select all of, I can just select this note and drag up and down to affect how much vibrato. So already, you know, sure, let the AI decide when to use vibrato. We're just going to decide how much. So let's just undo that. I can also even just use Control A, select all of these notes at once and reduce the amount of 
modulation. So it's going to be a much f sort of uh, straighter, flatter voice. Okay, we know that we, we still have some things to fix there, but we get the concept. And so now we get to the fun section. If we want to make this a choir, we absolutely can do that. And so, for instance, let's go in the soprano. I'll turn on choir mode. And now we have the option to add multiple voices into this one soprano voice, which is really a cool idea. So uh, if I just click add, then it adds me another Carolyn. But I can also go back to my voices and drag other voices in here. So for instance, we might have uh, someone coming from a gospel choir joining this choir, right? Um, now, something to be aware of is as you're working on these, each time you render, it now has to render two of them, right? One for each voice, not just one. So it does take a lot of time to render each one. Um, so let's add another one. I think let's add the Emma one. That was quite a nice one. Of course, by the way, any of these we can also blend, which is actually just astounding. So I could blend Emma with a bit of Carolyn. I could blend this uh, Zalo with a bit of Emma or a bit of Carolyn. Right, we've got all these options, which are amazing. We can also move the voices around. So let's say I wanted the sopranos in the sort of front and left section, which is quite cool. We are in a studio room. We have some offset and spread. I'm not entirely sure what those are doing, uh, but we can position them uh, where we want them. We can even position, can we position them individually? No, it doesn't look like it, but they're already spaced out a bit. Right, let's hear what we get there. We render those three pieces. Right, let's just reduce the pop sound a bit. We do have a, a slightly more quiet sound, right? It's a, it's a more blended sound, which is quite cool. Um, we also have some effects. Where's our effects? Up here, right? We've got the voice section and the effects section. And what they recommend is that we use the EQ of choir. The compression is nothing. Okay, yes, they're all on by, by default. And we're currently in the church reverb. We could just turn that off. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, so we've got those options as well, uh, which is really quite cool. So let's add it to the others. Give me a second and we'll see what kind of a choir sound we get. So again, this is one of those bugs we were talking about. We're not entirely sure why, uh, but it suddenly gets all crackly. I suspect we're just overloading some kind of processing uh, abilities by adding these 12 voices onto the four parts. Um, so we'll just have to hear them in the final output. And so I'm going to go through this and fix as much, many of those things as I can, and then we'll hear the final result. Next time, I'm going to look at how a studio does with mixing, you say, a solo voice with an, a, an accompaniment that we've got out of MuseScore, because that's a common feature that we might want to use as well. Here's the output. So all in all, very cool sound, I think. Uh, it is a pity that we can't, you know, hear it properly in the app, that there is that bug, but luckily it doesn't export like that. Uh, so we can still figure it out. But yeah, would have been would have been nice to to make those changes as we hear them, if you know what I mean. To be able to to do mixing and, and change effects with the whole choir at a time. Um, that would be nice. I sure the reverb is nice, um, all of those other effects are probably adding some value, 
I'm not getting a full choir sound. Uh, we're still hearing too much of individual voices, and perhaps that's just because it's a, you know, we've only put three voices on each part. But at the same time, I would have expected to hear more sort of blend of, and, and rather than, yeah, just, it doesn't feel even like three voices. It feels like one slightly changed voice. Um, well, maybe that can, can improve as they keep working on this app. But like I said earlier, one of the main things that I really like about this, uh, about a studio is the ability to just customize everything. You know, they're not just slapping an AI on and saying, hey, look, you've got your lyrics now be happy. Uh, they're really giving you full access to all of the all of the deep stuff that you want. Perhaps you've also tried this app. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, and I hope this has helped if you are using it. I certainly love the idea of giving Acquire some practice tracks to use. So see you in the next one. Bye for now.